Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to Pitch to Pitch. Fourth episode of the fourth season. Welcome, and thank you for being with us. It's a very special Christmas edition, by the way, and we have a surprise. Of course, we will reveal it at the end. And who are you? <laughs> My name is Elena Peneva. Uh, I'm very thankful to be the host of Pitch to Pitch for the second season in a row. I'm a module master, which means that at my company, Bright Module, I help companies achieve their business goals using the right tools of communication. And who are you? Sir? I'm uh, the friendly neighborhood Krampus for this Christmas edition. Yeah, this and is our theme in the costumes tonight. Yeah, Krampus and uh, Snow White. Uh, the red wall. Okay. Whatever. So welcome, it's me again at Anas Nechev, uh, really glad to be here and to see you all, full house. Who is here for the first time? Please, hands up. Every time, more than half of the room. Nice. It's a very nice, nice, nice statistic. Nice. Welcome, okay. and we hope you enjoy it. Be loud, also be participant, because uh, our audience is always particip participating in our voting for the pitches and then asking questions since three episodes ago, so please be active. Yeah, don't forget to vote for your favorite speeches tonight because it's a tradition that our audience here and online, thanks to OMI TV, big applause to OMI TV and the stream. <laughs> hello, LinkedIn, hello, Facebook, ta -ta -ta -ta, and the other ways to watch the stream. Thank you. And, uh, of course, tonight there is a competition and you can vote and win an award. So grab your phone and go to ahaslights.com slash P2P vote to vote for your favorite startup. Also, don't forget to not leave this link that we just said uh, and just dictated. It's above there. Don't go out of the link because you can win an award only if you stay on the link through the whole competition. Uh, about P2, Pitch to Pitch, it's a startup competition organized by the biggest network of co-working spaces in, on the Balkans, Networking Premium. We are just below one of their locations uh, in this building, but they have others and they're very exciting. So we have 10 episodes each season, then we have 11th final episode where we, where, where we choose our winner. Every episode also has several winners and many awards from our supporters and friends. But the main point is not to win an award or not to be the winner of a season. The main point is to go on the stage, pitch, be good, be better, be the best in it. Be and, a wildcat. And, <laughs> and, uh, and find the people and, or the, the team or the investors that will support you eventually. This happened many times in the last season. So if you're a startup or a founder in the audience, Wondering whether you should participate? Yes, do it. And now... And by the way, let me just get back a little bit about the award that you're going to win. You heard about the networking premium. And big applause for Emil Shikarjitsky for creating this amazing event. And... And... And you can win one week pass for all networking premium locations tonight if you vote for your favorite startup. So enjoy it. And now let's welcome on stage our ju jury. Oh, I'm, I was wondering whether to say honorable. Yes, they're honorable jury. So please welcome on stage Madeleine Zekova. <laughs> Woo! Uh, the other side, okay. Yep. Javor Gochev. Borislav Borislavov. Thomas Tsanev. And Ivailo Ivanov. Now we are heading to the pitches. Thank you, Jerry, for 
coming up on stage. And uh, now, before we start with the startups, uh, they will each have one minute to pitch and then five minutes for questions from the jury. During this time, you will also be able to ask questions on YouTube or Facebook Live or LinkedIn Live or on the YouTube channel of Umai TV, with who you should follow and also follow Networking Premium uh, on all the social media. Uh, so you can choose which, which one is the most convenient for you and ask questions. Then, after the jury goes in, to decide which is the, who, who are the winners for tonight, we will ask your questions in a special interview with the startup. So please be active. And now... It's good to be active. And now uh, uh, another guidelines here. So when you go to the stage, you can grab this mic if you're pitching your startup. And here, stay on the mark and look at the ju judges because they are the people with the money, you know. <laughs> So without further ado, I would like to invite on the stage the first startup, but okay. Big shout out to Nikki Zahariev on the piano, everybody. He's kind of a, he's kind of a also a time bomb because if the jury or the pitch is going too long, he will just interrupt them. Yeah, if you hear if you heard Nikki, so if you hear Nikki, you should stop immediately yeah. because it's rude, but you know, beautiful. It's the very special rule. He is uh, the decision maker who is talking, who is not. And without further ado, the first startup is Sotin Mikhail Majarov. <laughs> Whoa, a group. So this is the pitching spot. You can be everywhere around, yeah. Traditional educational system often fell short in preparing young students for the complexities of the modern world. Entrepreneurial mindset and soft skills are often overlooked, leaving a gap in holistic education. We developed League of Entrepreneurs, an educational learning mobile video game combining different quizzes, design thinking tests that brings essential entrepreneurial knowledge and also enhances soft skills crucial for the future success. We are targeting youngsters and anyone eager to embark on a new entrepreneurial learning journey. We operate on a freemium model offering basic futures, in-game additional level knowledge, purchases and also on subscription model. League of Entrepreneurs is not just a game, it's a pathway to a future where learning and success go hand to hand and every challenge is an opportunity. We are looking for investments uh, for, to fully develop our game. Uh, to release our beta version and uh, support from mentors. You lost me a little bit. Can you just tell us with two sentences what it's uh, the startup it's all about? So we can just, but no rush, no rush. Uh, the main point of the startup is a educational video game that is meant for young entrepreneurs that are eager to embark on a new entrepreneurial learning journey. Uh, <coughs> yeah. uh, Can you tell us a bit more about your team? Uh, our team is uh, focused. Uh, we have a working MVP. Uh, that is running on mobile devices. Uh, we managed to hire video game concept artist, uh, Elysia, and also a web developer for our product. And how much money are you looking to raise? Uh, we are, um, according to our calculations, uh, we need around uh, 25,000 uh, euro to fully develop our video game for maintenance, uh, marketing, uh, software uh, development, and uh, uh, additional staff members. Can you tell us a little bit more about the competition and how you're different from them? Uh, we are uh, unique cause, uh, because we uh, have a working MVP now from the moment. Uh, we have, um, uh, we are very different from our uh, competitors uh, because 
um, according to our research, the closest competitors to our game are Capitalism and Trivial Door. Uh, but we are greatly inspired by Uchise, Monopoly, and also Tamagotchi, uh, which received one billion uh, dollars back in the 1996. Uh, why Tamagotchi? Because uh, the main mission of the Tamagotchi is uh, to virtually take care of a uh, animal. But in our game, it's very simil similar because uh, in our game we are uh, taking care of a virtual business venture. Right. Inhale and exhale, right? Okay. Uh, who is your target market? I mean, geography-wise and segment-wise. Our target market, um, um, we are focused on uh, teenagers from 13 to 25 uh, years old that are eager to embark on a new entrepreneurial learning journey. And geography-wise? You're going to approach Bulgarian market or you? Uh, we are w localized uh, only in uh, Bulgaria for now, but uh, in the future, uh, we are uh, hoping to localize, uh, to extend the game to uh, worldwide use. Right. How are you going to make uh, marketing? I mean, what kind of approach you're going to use? Um, we have uh, three. Um, also, we have a subscription model, which is uh, divided by a uh, freemium version of the game, uh, without, uh, from, from which our main income will come with uh, the ads. And uh, we have a premium version of the game uh, with, uh, without any ads, uh, and also uh, with um, additional uh, tips from mentors which includes additional tips for mentors and uh, personal certificates for every player. Unfortunately, that doesn't answer the question. My question was how are you going to approach your customers? I mean, you're going to uh, start ads on social media, you're going to use influence marketing, you're going to pay some billboards on the streets or what? Um. Our plan is uh, to use um, uh, social media, uh, business academies like uh, Tinovator, Able Mentor, A Able Activator, and uh, yeah, those approaches. Okay. And also uh, uh, teachers from our schools. Do you have any idea what is your break-even point expenditure-wise? how much money you have to earn in order to pay the salaries of the guys behind you? According uh, to our calculations, we need around 25,000 uh, euro. For per month? month? Oh, uh, no, uh, around uh, <laughs> 10,000 a month. Okay. Uh, this idea is from Tinovator. I was part of Tinovator and was part of the mentors there. So I know they were one of the best, actually, uh, presenting idea. So I was interested when, I mean, you started with the Tinovator idea. Uh, so uh, when the idea came and how long are you working, actually, on the project already? And w I mean, to, to what's, uh, what's the progress? till now, because I think that you, you're working just a couple of months. Um, yeah, uh, we have already a working MVP, which is uh, perfectly working on mobile devices. Uh, we also uh, received um, uh, another, uh, we also uh, managed to hire a concept artist and uh, uh, mm. a developer for our website. Okay. All right, good job. Can you just... Uh, can you introduce your team and the people that are on the team so that we can see them over here? Uh, this is Alicia, our uh, concept artist. Uh, Emma, our uh, web uh, developer. Uh, Eva and Melanie, our marketing uh, strategist. And Ivaiwo, uh, our software developer. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's an interesting view. Thank you. Good luck. Jerry, please be nice with the questions. Our next competitor is Kawai Q or Kawai Q? Kawai Q. Okay. Nikolai Ivanov. Hippies, punks, uh, comic enthusiasts, even the LGBT co culture. They're our example of subculture, which started small, expanded drastically, and the business who approached them first profited the most. Now is the ununited anime culture, which is worth $30 billion, and 10% of it is in Europe. Our plan is by business, Japanese cafe model, which is basically uh, very inter interactive, cafe full of anime girls to expand it as a franchise and put it in the biggest city in Europe. So our team uh, for now is concentrated on this, that, that it's not a cafe, it's like everyday event place. We've worked with the biggest anime event organizer in Bulgaria, create nine events with minimal uh, money of hundred dollars and reach it, reach it 20 times the profit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this is a, is it a place that exists here in the city or, or it's uh, just a vision? No, we are on validation. As I said, we organized nine events for now and we reached a lot uh, bigger profit than our expenses. Okay, but there is a location in the city where you do that already, right? We, we, we use multiple clubs, bars, or oh, just it's places. Different, different places where yeah. you do that. We, we even like organize some like big events like the Comic Cons. So you'll be, uh, this would be a, an event agency, kind of an event agency, right? If you... Uh, no, it will be a place for everyday events in form of the cafe. It's hard to explain because you have to be like anime fan to like see the whole thing, but basically these cafes are almost in every anime. Okay, so you're testing the idea in different locations and the vision is to have one location where you can host those events and that would be the business. The business will start as the location is hyper successful and start expanding as a franchise, not only in Bulgaria, but outside of it. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. Um, how would you define the problem you are trying to solve with your project? Anime culture is not united, not only in Bulgaria, but in other Euro European countries. We, we unite them in the same way as the uh, global Comic-Con events do, but difference is that ours is every day. So the guys from your community need a place to meet and chat, right? Like uh, every community, us local in real life, also digitally. And this is what our competition, which creates similar kind of cafe, doesn't do right. They operate it as a cafe, not as a made cafe, which have to be. Okay, what do you need? Why are you here today? We need people. We need uh, experts and people who are passionate about gig culture. Our team is from Tree. We have a technical guy. We have the management girl. We have me, which like uh, creates, cre are more on creative and managing the whole thing stuff and 20 other volunteers. But we still need uh, content creators, designers, photographs, um, uh, cafe managers. So, basically, I'm here to say if you know someone or if you're interested in joining the team and be the first to unite this culture because someone will unite it soon enough, you can conduct me.
Okay, I think the other one. Okay, cool. And uh, how much money do you need to start? Have you cal calculated it or? We have calculated that uh, what, what one cafe for one, one year will need around uh, 200,000 levels in order to uh, start getting popular and start generating the profit. Okay, so 100K euro. Uh, um, I really like what you said that you are organizing events so far. This is a perfect way to validate your concept. So maybe keep organizing more and more events and you know, gaining traction, maybe earning some money and then you know, based on your traction and experience, then you can turn it into a cafe. And yeah, uh, by the way, co-working spaces and other event places could be your partners. So yeah, leverage on their resources as well. Yeah. And I wanted us to ask you in regards of your community, um, how are you inviting the people and uh, basically engaging uh, with the people that are, have been, for example, on, on your events? Do you have, a, I don't know, an online group? Or how you're populi uh, popularizing <laughs> your uh, idea? <laughs> Basically. The, the main way that we are popularizing our idea is making like really cool and amazing events and people are so like light up that they talk, up, that they talk to their friends and come again with even more people. But also but my, our main channels are the social media. We have uh, Facebook and Instagram, Bag and Mate Cafe and Geek Culture on which we uh, create content and spread ads and also by uh, paper flyers and stickers. Stickers, okay. stickers are very effective, by the way. <laughs> but uh, your community, how it is growing? I mean, what's the... How, how the whole community how, is growing? Yeah, yeah. I mean... uh, it, it, it becomes natural. It's just a trend which keeps expanding and expanding by more anime, aka Japanese animator came, okay. came out, and more events like Comic Cons and selling of merchandise. Right. Like develops and develops. Back to business. According your wildest dreams, I mean wildest dreams. You mentioned you need 100k euros in order to start the first venue, right? Yes. What is the promise to investor? I mean, what is the uh, ROI, and in what time? Uh, the, the 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 promise is percentage of of the company and also the profit. How, how much I'm going to earn from your project if I invest in your project? Well, the, the Bulgarian Comic Con gathers 30,000 people. Uh, 30, uh, yeah, 30,000 people. So if we get at least 1% and make them spend like at least, uh, uh, to at least 20 levers a month in the cafe for a year, we will have around uh, 600,000 levels. Well, only, only for 1%, and we can get even more. Plus, we can get a people who like new and interesting stuff. So we have guaranteed that it will work in less than a year uh, out of the normal cafe, and we'll have like a real style profit, which I can't. Thank you. Analyze right Thank now. you. That answered the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kawaii and uh, Q. Sorry. And uh, we should continue, but before that, don't forget to vote to your favorite startup at the link ahaslides.com slash p2p vote and choose your favorite pitch. So without further ado, I'd like to invite on the stage our next startup for tonight, our Christmas edition. Ho, ho, ho. It's not on the script, sorry. Uh, my Captain Dad. So, to start, I'll start with a joke, actually. Why did the sailman fall asleep? Because he went snorkeling. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. Typical that joke. Yeah. 
We rarely laugh at them, not only because they lack comedy, but also because it reminds us of how fatherhood is seen and treated as a joke. For some, this could be a very exciting experience. For others, it could be pretty overwhelming. So there's lots to learn, lots to do and to share. But where? This is where we come in. We are My Captain Dad, the all-in-one app designed for the fathers. We are not just another app with medical facts. We provide so much more to our customers. Currently, we are working on the third version of our prototype. We are partnering with major hospitals and baby product companies. We are aiming that every father feels comfortable with the knowledge and tools to become a captain of his, dad, of his child. So we are asking for a humble sum of 100,000 euro and partnerships, which are much more needed. So join us. Can you introduce your team so that we know all the people? Can you introduce uh, the team? So um, this and is yourself Peter. And yourself. OK, so this is Peter. He is our IT guru. He is in uh, charge of the tech th things. Uh, this is Theodore. He is our uh, guy for the financial part. And also, he is uh, a manager of us all, the administrative part as well. Uh, I'm Svetina. I'm, um, I'm a medical trainee currently in obstetrics and gynecology, uh, and I'm running Facebook groups for pregnant women. And uh, we have one more member who couldn't make it today because she has to take care of her three adorable children. She's Alexandra, and she's our marketing manager. Oh, cool, fair. So uh, this, is, uh, this app is full of content for the dads to make jokes, or what, what's the purpose of it? I, I didn't quite get it. Like. So what, what does it mean to build relationships with their children? So um, this uh, application will follow the, uh, will educate the father from pregnancy on. It will give him medical, the medical information about the development of the, his child, the development of the pregnancy, what stages his wife is going through, and how he should uh, look to this. So it, it's more about developing relationship with the pregnant wife, not the child, is During it? the pregnancy, yes, but afterwards we're following the development of the child up until the third year. Ah, I see. Yeah. And, and what, what is, what's the content? <laughs> like in... So we're giving the basic... So if it's a five-year-old, what, what would be the content in this, uh, in the app? Is it just uh, about uh, biological development or it's... Something about education or something else? Yeah, we're giving them the basic information, which is verified by specialists in their field. And also, we are making video tutorials, for example, how to, um, um, how to put the diaper on the baby, how to feed them, how to um, make a baby party, uh, how to put up the... Um, nursing, uh, the nursing uh, care at home, and so on. I see. And how many, uh, how many competitors do you have? I, I assume there are many companies that have done this already. So. Um, yeah, we have uh, some direct competitors that are mainly directed to the father. For example, like Hi Daddy. Uh, we have the parenting apps as a whole that are um, designed for mothers and fathers as well. And we have the indirect competitors such as FEA that are um, directed to the mothers mainly. But, uh, for example, on the Bulgarian market, only FEA is um, relevant for us. All right. My, my feedback would be, you have a real problem in there, but you didn't communicate the problem very well. I mean, the people around here did not understand what, what, what is it all about. And uh, I get it, but for some different reason, because I've seen you guys many times. And, uh, yeah. Fatherhood, especially for the first time, especially with a young child, is, is not a joke. It's not easy. It, it's actually different and difficult and challenging. And uh, uh, well done to you guys for trying to, to tackle that problem in one way or the other. But you have to improve that pitch, especially in the first part where you explain what the problem is. And then after that, it becomes a lot easier. So that's my feedback to you. Thank you. 
how, how did you start the project? I mean, who among you is the father? None of them. <laughs> They're preparing. They're preparing. <laughs> hey, it's fatherhood, so I'm looking for a father. So who is it? You? How did you start the problem? Um, well, it started in, um, in, my, in uh, my appointments with the patients. As mom? No, as a doctor. And I'm the one that's consulting the couples. Okay. So none of you is a father, right? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to, to ask because you were giving examples in the beginning. So while well, the woman is pregnant after that, uh, when the baby is small. So, I mean, the content of the application, I mean, uh, how much of the life of the kid and of the family it's covering. Because I see here, uh, like the subscription base, uh, there is also a family subscription. So it's not only about that, it seems. Or perhaps it is in the beginning, uh, targeted towards that, and after that is yeah. expanding, so just... Mm, yeah, so uh, we're following the development of the child to the third year, um, and uh, the, this family package, well, we've decided to put one family package because since the pregnancy apps and the mom's apps are used also from the father today, uh, maybe our app could be used from the mother as well, or from the grandparents. Well done. Okay, uh, thanks for the, for the business plans. It's really nice because, you know, contributes your pitch. It's difficult to explain what you do in one minute. So yeah, it's, an, it's a nice idea to have handouts. Uh, how far are you from l uh, launching the, lab, uh, the app? In terms of time and money? So um, we are currently in our R&D phase. And that's uh, mainly because we want to minimize the initial cost of the development of the application. Um, I think that in terms of uh, time, it should take us about six more months to finish the whole UX UI, uh, the whole design of the application, and to uh, develop the gamified learning experience, which is one of the most technically complicated parts of the app. And how much money did you say you needed? 100,000 euro. 100K. 100K, yeah. Yeah, 100K. Because next year will be quite difficult. There won't be, the VCs won't be investing any money. So, yeah, it will be difficult fundraising. You need to, to look into uh, business angels or, you know, other sources of funding. So, my advice would be to start thinking how you can monetize the content and the knowledge you have without the app. So maybe some courses online, paid or in place, in person, whatever, so we can gather actual real feedback and you know maybe build on that in the in the app. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ah I forgot my scenario. By the way, the biggest mom up in Bulgaria, which has like 90% cover. No, actually they don't, they're not mothers as well. So you know what? You don't have to be fathers to, to create a very successful app. That's true. I mean, I there are no parents, yeah? <laughs> okay, now so, the next sorry, one. Sorry for interruption. One of the toughest thing in life is to become an entrepreneur. And what could help you along the way in this tough, tough life to become an entrepreneur is personal relationship with the problem you are trying to solve. I would not invest in those team until either one of them become father or attract a father in their team to believe them. Okay, but still we have the number one app in Bulgaria from non-parents. Non this is what I just pointed out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're the man, you know better. Uh, Josh Young from Militica, Emilitica. Okay, please welcome on stage. Good luck. Okay, 
Tonight, I'm actually not here for funding. I just wanted to introduce myself and Emelitica, who we are and what we do. So Emelitica is a consultancy firm specializing in machine learning and AI. And we have two verticals. One is um, advisory, consulting our clients. And the second one is our own products. And one of the products we are actually currently developing that's doing pretty well in, in terms of progress um, is a specialized chatbot um, and this chatbot um, <clears throat> uh, will act as a personal assistant to everyone in the company. Ah, everyone in the company, and also act as a knowledge base. So you could ask this chatbot, well, and the name is Genie, because it's a personal assistant. And this, you could ask um, this Genie, like, uh, what was the company policy on drinking during the working hours, or um, what, uh, fetch me, a document or a contract uh, from a cust uh, from a vendor from last year, or you know, simply as I want to request my holiday from this date to that date. So you know, you can you can really. Sorry. Okay. I'll stop here. All right. So. Your goal is just to introduce yourself. Yeah. I didn't catch your name. Josh. Oh, Josh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, what what brings you on this stage? Like, are you just traveling, or are you a backpacker, or? No, no, no. I I, I don't uh, think you're from around here, so that's <laughs> why I'm asking. Yeah. So I'm originally from Korea, but I've lived in the UK for I don't know quite quite many years, and my wife is Bulgarian, so. I've moved because of that. Oh, family's here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm the CEO and the founder of Emilitica. Um, it's out of my own frustration of com going into companies, realizing that the companies don't really know what they're doing or what they want to do with machine learning and AI. And you know, I, I, I've seen so many companies wasting their resources trying to do something with AI because it's cool. So your biggest project is you ingest the content of a policy for, say, a company, and then this chatbot is answering questions. Well, so the, the point is the chatbot so. has um, internal knowledge of the company. Mm -hmm. So, like, and it can be divided into different teams as well. So different teams have different access to different information, which means, so a finance team, they could ask, what was our revenue last year? And the chatbot will simply give you that, or the finance team again could ask, uh, give me some spreadsheet about, again, revenues, let's say, and the chatbot will immediately give them instead of a person having to go through every single you know, file system. Okay, so I'm not really into chatbots too much, but yeah. ChatGPT is answering questions based on the whole internet. It's pulling data from everywhere, yep. right? ChatGPT, yes. You, and you can just make a chatbot that's pulling data only from a limited amount of information, absolutely, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And say you put a policy which is 150 pages, and somebody asks a question, and the software just uh, filters the content so that they can answer a specific question. Yeah. and, and Is it, that the way it works? Yeah, yeah. I mean, essentially, yes. So it doesn't have to be just one single document. It could be many documents in a file system. And obviously, depending on your company policy, we could send this request to OpenAI, open AI, to ChatGPT, or we could be also served within the company, so it's not exposed to outside world. Okay, I understand. And then uh, I guess there are many companies that develop this type of software right now. Trying, yes. And you, I mean, do you feel good like among the competition, or how? Yeah, where do you I, think I, you are? I'm actually very confident. Uh, we, we've made, like I said, we've made really good progress in the past couple of weeks, especially. Um, and yeah, this is promising. Good. Uh, <laughs> do we have any more questions? Anyone? Uh, one of the all time questions when it comes for software companies in which point you're trying to make the leap from service to product. Are you going to do that, or your intention is to 
remain as a service company? Yeah, so at one point we will have to really properly address that question, whether if you want to remain as a service provider having product or do we want to separate into service product only and a product company only. Right now, I'm just trying to um, keep going as both, and, but when the, when the time comes, it will definitely have to be properly addressed. Okay, thanks for thanks for coming here and you know sharing your story with us. Uh, about the chatbot, have you got any paying clients already? Um, no, we don't have any paying oh, okay. paying clients at the moment. But um, I've, I've talked to um, let's say more relatively bigger cu potential customers, and they've showed you know real interest. Okay, so your um, main source of income is through the consultancy. Ex yeah, at the moment, yes. Okay, thanks. Go. Cool. All the best. Thank you. <laughs> so don't forget to vote to your favorite pitch at thehaslights.com slash P2P vote and win an amazing award by Networking Premium Coworking Spaces. And next, without further ado, is Biliana Todorova Ajar. Or Ajar, I don't know. Welcome. We are what we eat. We want, all want our food to be healthy, delicious, personalized to my own taste, and affordable. And everyone should tell us that this is not possible. We did it. We innovated the entire process from the way you order your food, from the way we source ingredients, from the way we cook, and from the way we deliver. Last month, we sell 5,000 portions, and we still get managed a healthy profit of 60%. Do you know that more than 60% of food waste in households is from the households, <laughs> sorry. And a jar helps households to save 10% of CO emissions and to reduce the food waste up to 30%. We need 500,000 euro investment to scale. I'll start, I'll start. Okay. Can you tell us a bit more about the name? What does it mean? What's, what's the name? Okay. Ajar means health and strong. It's an old name of Bulgarian village. <laughs> Old name of Bulgarian village. Ah, village. It, it's mean strong as and health as. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure uh, I understood your product. You're you're going to use the food waste in order to produce. No, food. we cooked and you cook. in the innovation of the cooking, we reduce the food waste. Because we manage all the process and our innovation in the, all the process for producing the food, so we help households to reduce the food waste if you uh, use a jar, of course. <laughs> what, what kind of innovation is that? How come nobody else wants to do it and you can do it? What's, what's the secret sauce? Uh, the innovation is from the way we manage all the process because we have more than 30 years experience in this area. So we, uh, first of all, we Order, our orders is uh, one day ahead, so also we cook with damaged uh, products. This is the product that usually goes to food waste, and it's but yet we use it because they are great quality. They do not, didn't go on the market because they go for the food waste, but it is great quality and delicious, so we use them. Also, we cooked overnight and with slow roasting and the process that is very healthy. And also, we arrange our logistics, and we have uh, lockers. We want to build lockers and put there uh, the food. So it is uh, also reduced the price about the logistics and uh, all the process. And um, so this is not just a list of recipes. No. Because you said we're teaching people how to cook. No. 
uh, it's uh, you have a facility and you take online orders and uh, you it's a restaurant but you don't serve any customers there right uh, it's a something kitchen. like this yes we just cook as said my partner we just cook, it is a but we cook commercial in way. commercial kitchen yes okay and uh, all the orders how many orders uh, for the year you had the number uh, we went in September so oh. till that moment we have I think that about 40 orders per day so as I said we already managed 5,000 portions and you're uh, so the orders come from uh, some uh, aggregator apps like uh, or, or it's just on your website, or where uh, those orders come from? Yes, at the moment we have a website, but we want to build application to be easy and to separate because now is the part of our other business. And you have Glovo or some other? No, the Glovo and the other companies, they make the food much more expensive. They give more than 20% for them. Yeah, but they we give have you all logistic. They, they give you a distribution channel. You don't need to build we don't any need logistics. Them. We so. want to make healthy living, the easier choice. This is our mission. So the food must be not cheap, but affordable. And if you take uh, Glovo and other, it will be So you expensive. think that if you build a logistics network, you can optimize it better than Glovo? Uh, we will build the lockers. This is the predeterminated points which we put in the corporate clients as uh, office buildings or uh, residential busy buildings. So we save the time from uh, pickup from the client and also from the logistic. And this will I be our innovation. lockers, like the delivery lockers where yes. you can punch a number. Yes, something How like this. How much does it cost one locker? I think that's a big investment. Uh, it depends on software. No, I'm talking yes, about 5, even the hardware, level. it's very expensive. Why would you go and spend money for lockers if people uh, can deliver? Because it's cheaper. It's cheaper than... Just let me finish. If people can deliver your product, then you have a ready uh, distribution network. Why would you go and invest in lockers, which are crazy expensive? Because I it will be much more expensive. And so how much is one? How much is one locker? Afford. How much is one locker? We now investigate because we order. We set. Uh, we order some f uh, firm to make our projects. But from now, we don't need workers because we can work with our corporate clients and to put the food directly to them in uh, their kitchen. Oh, OK. So, so it's, this uh, is not necessary for that moment, not before we find the money. <laughs> so the main customers now are corporate lunches or people that order, like in the offices, uh, big, uh, big orders for, the, for lunchtime or? Is it dinner or lunch time? What, what is your You can order for time? the lunch or for dinner. Because of pre-orders, you can choose the slots in what time you want to receive your food. Mm -hmm. So which, which one is bigger? Is it dinner or lunch? At the moment, it's for the lunch. Mm -hmm. But we have also for dinner. I see. Um, so I, I think just uh, one sentence. I don't think you need to be a distribution company. Somebody has already figured out the distribution of food. If you want to make recipes that are healthy, go and cook your stuff. I don't think you need to do lockers or do people walking around town or reinvent the wheel. It's already done. And do they charge you? They charge you. But the service is there, and they have the capability, they have the expertise to do it. I don't think you're in a position to go and develop a new company and then go and be an expert in logistics all of a sudden. It doesn't work that well, in, and in lockers, right? I uh, understand your point, but uh, I didn't mention, but I have more than 10 years experience as an entrepreneur, and also I know the cost of distribution. Believe me, this is very expensive. So it's better to find your own way uh, to give the people right to eat personalized. Thank you. We have any more questions? Yeah, only one. Um, about these lockers, uh, <laughs> the only logic I see, at least, of having the lockers is uh, if they have any function like uh, keeping uh, the, I don't know, the meal hot or something like that. Because otherwise, uh, yeah, the delivery is is pretty good solution. 
kind of. Uh, so are the lockers going to have any other functions so they can keep the, the food? At the food only for the, to, to the keep the food because uh, the client choose exact time when he will want to receive your food. So if you make order, you can fix, I want to receive the food at 12 o'clock. So you know that or between 12 yeah. and 1, you will get. This is our idea. And this we do but because... from a logistic point of view, you are not, I mean, you're not going to decrease your cost because still you need to bring the food to the locker, so... Yes, but we want from the previous day. So our logistics in the early morning already ready, all the... Mar uh, yeah. All the marshals. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I think we agree here. Just drop the lockers. It's not a good idea. Okay, <laughs> and we can stay and argue here, but it's it's just not a good idea because you have to rent the space for the lockers. You can't no. just put a locker everywhere. We just put and the locker everywhere, to not to rent the space. Okay, I give up. I don't want to argue with you anymore. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to the jury. It's obvious that their input is always valuable and their questions reveal more than we know. So now the jury will uh, decide upon who is the winner and uh, who are the winners for tonight's competition. So please um, go backstage and do your magic. And we will welcome on stage again the pitching startups. One person from each of them, please welcome on stage so we can ask the questions from the audience. Yeah, the speakers of the startup groups. Only one person, please. We will have a short interview with them while the jury is discussing. Please welcome, yeah. Go, go yeah, on stage. all the startups. Choose the first seat. Officer, I think we're waiting for some people. Biliana, on the stage, please, for the interview. Anyone else? I will give you. Maybe let's start with the order. Yeah, please sit down. Sit in down the order here. Order of pitching, please. Take a seat. Sit on the your chairs. Choosing. Your yes. You're important at the moment. You should sit at the jury's chair. So I will give you this mic. So not only the jury is discussing, but also the audience is discussing. Let's discuss together, I suggest. Also for our audience online who asked some questions. So, we will start in the order of pitching. So, so team mm. first, maybe you take the questions. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, attention, please. <laughs> Thank you. OK. Thank you. So uh, the question of uh, the audience, Sotin, Mikhail, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, how many participants tested the, the platform? Um, we have uh, conducted a survey and uh, for my group of people, and we received very positive feedback from those group. Uh, we also uh, gave the game uh, to our teachers, and they val validated it with a uh, great uh, response. Okay, it, uh, it's kind of a weird question, but uh, we should ask. Is it your first pitch? Uh, yeah, it's my first pitch. So big applause for him. Thank you. Thank you very much. So in the future, which are the countries that you're planning to target? Uh, we are focusing on uh, United States, um, um, maybe Ger Germany. Um, and yeah, we were thinking of these countries. Okay, and let me, uh, can you tell me a bit about the technology that you're using? Uh, um, we are using uh, Unity 3D uh, uh, for the development of our video game. Our MVP is uh, made with it. Uh, also, we uh, use uh, Blender for developing the 3D objects of the game. Okay, thank you, Elena. Uh, my questions are to Kavaik, 
How do you tackle the problem that usually when you try to explain your product and your business, people don't get it because they are not in the culture? Well, the numbers talk for themselves in that case. A uh, 13 billion market is a lot of money. And 10% of in Europe is also a lot. And when you, specific, uh, when you specifically in Bulgaria, 30,000 people who uh, visit one event, which is not the only event, and you have like many, many other fans who just uh, stay at home because usually like the geek community is uh, more active in, on internet than like on physical places. And um, I think our strength is that we can get these gigs from their homes into our place, into our events, as we've already done a, a multiple times. How, how, do you, how do you bring them? How, because you just said that they prefer to be online. But in the same time, we have many communities in Bulgaria, actually, you know, other organizers. Why you? Because we are doing it casually. We, we have Comic Con, which happens once a year. And we have a really few uh, opportunities for these geeky people to gather and socialize and e express their passions. So we are doing it casually. And we, we are doing it in a really great way, as we see about people returning to us and increasing with every event. Do you have legal challenges? Because I guess you're serving food and you have to, you know, take care of this side of the business and the events? Well, the serving of food, like every restaurant is faced with those uh, legal challenges. For now, as the events, we are usually um, uh, partnering with uh, bars and like places which have all the rights to sell food and events which also had the right to sell food in them. But uh, I think it's more like, uh, maybe they're asking about legal problem about the uh, cosplayers. Yeah, also authors' rights. Yeah, uh, well, the Met Cafe usually has uh, certain rules which are uh, not touching like the waitresses, not asking contacts, not being to and test, which is uh, managed by the team, as we've done it like on multiple times where we've done the events. And last question, do you have a similar or same but successful model here in the Eastern Europe? Here in what? I in Eastern Europe. In, in Eastern Europe, no. Only like anime cafes, but they're just cafes. In Europe, a lot of cafes advertise themselves as made cafe. Last week, I was in Spain in one made cafe, which was not made cafe as it presents itself. Maybe the only uh, country that uh, represents the idea most closely is uh, England with one made cafe in London, opened before six months. Okay, but they you. still are not creating the community and I don't think that they, can, they could even in the future attract customers from the internet, like the global customers, into their cafe. Thank you. Should we continue with the next one? Okay, my captain dad. Uh, you have the microphone. How will you be different from your competition? Is the first question. Um, well, first, our information is verified from specialists, as I already said in the pitch. Um, second, we provide mostly video materials, uh, which we've heard from the fathers we've interviewed. That is the um, uh, preferable way to connect with them, as they don't have the time to read endless texts. They prefer to listen to something. They prefer to watch something to be shown so that they can do this afterwards more easily. Uh, another question is, can you develop uh, the MVP without funding? Actually, the question is, how can you? So probably you, can you? Um, well, I'm probably not the person for this. Maybe our technical guru can answer this. So he says yes. So uh, yeah, that's what we are trying to do actually now without funding. We're trying to do our best. 
What is the difference between your app and the mom apps? Only the videos or the, the format or something else? Well, uh, the viewpoint, the information will be much more synthesized as the father is not the one who is feeling all the kicking and uh, the pain inside. So um, he should be more of a side watcher about this part. But also um, the journey for the father is quite different from the one for, for the mother. So he gets the more financial uh, information, the more administrative part, while the mother gets more the medical stuff, like w what's really happening in your organism. This is during pregnancy, but you're until yeah, adulthood, and no? afterwards also, because the first 40 days are uh, the s fourth trimester, as they call it nowadays. What is your go-to marketing strategy? Do you have such? Um, well, uh, we're currently gathering our first um, loyal customers to the website <laughs> through the social media and direct through our direct contacts with the patients and also we visit different conferences we talk to doctors so that we can ask them to ask their patients to join our groups thank you okay it was kind of a different language right now because i still play the tarnish on elden ring so <laughs> The next question is to Josh. Uh, did you get funded and uh, how much? What's your exit strategy? Oh, no, I haven't. Well, I didn't get any funding. Uh, so all of the um, company expenses are covered by the revenues from the consultancy. And I actually wanted to clarify because uh, it was really concentrated on the chatbot, but. <laughs> Chatbot is just one of the products that we are currently developing that is showing, you know, good progress. We are also developing other products that, you know, hopefully the, the aim is to help companies or even people to optimize their workflows or even, you know, optimizing customer facing things. So, yeah, that's, I just wanted to clarify that we, we don't concentrate on chatbot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's important because my next question is, uh, how are you planning to resolve the overmarket in the field? And do you agree that it's an overmarket right now in the AI? Uh, in, in the AI or in the chatbot? In the chatbot. In the chatbot. I, I do agree that there is a saturation. But the, the problem is there is not a single outstanding chatbot you know, that covers, let's say, I don't know, majority of the market. So um, I think what's... what's Really important is to have very specialized chatbots that are actually really good at what they do, like ChatGPT, for example, um, and then kind of you know grow your market share, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Okay, how powerful is uh, your tech architecture, and uh, <laughs> where do you keep the info behind that? Um, I mean, th this question to me sounds a bit vague, so. I'm not even quite sure how to answer it precisely. Um, but what, what we're doing is pretty advanced. Um, it, I would say in terms of, so what we're doing is not the core fundamental technology, right? Like developing the GPT models. What we're doing is we're building applications on top of the cutting edge models. And so in terms of application of these fundamental, on top of these fundamental models, I, I would say we are really cutting edge. And how to keep the information, I don't know what, what this question means by information. Okay, thank you, Elena. Do you have any more questions or should I go? Yeah. Okay, you and or me. Okay, so Biliana, uh, do, do you make healthy, delicious, personalized? This is a comment, probably. Or go with the... the, the Let me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the first question is, you have other uh, businesses who, which are connected to food. We, we know you because you have participated before on Pitch to Pitch. Why did you start this one? Good question. Thank you. Uh, we start this one because we understand that investors didn't understand what we do. So we try to make it simple and more clear and also 
to fix it on the personalized eating because yes, we have different type of eating and usually and uh, lunch and, and also regime foods. But this personalized eating, this is the uh, what it, we we saw that it, this is missing on the market. Okay, so so it's the same business, but. Wrapped no, in a different it will way? be totally different business. We also already launched our new company, so it will be separated. This is our idea, and we want to scale with this company because this also missing not only in Bulgaria and in Europe. Okay, what is the biggest challenge then? The biggest challenge is to find the investment. <laughs> not that they don't get you, just to find them. Okay. Yes, just to find them. Um, can you introduce your type of clients? What is the, the uh, uh, ideal client? Uh, yes, we have two, two main clients maybe. The first and the bigger group at the moment is the s people who are sportsmen. Uh, they go to sport and they know what to eat and how to eat. And also we can uh, fix it as a uh, Loha segment. Loha segment, this is the people around the world which is dedicated to health eating, sustainability living, living and also to social causes. So this is in Europe between 30 <laughs> and... <six. laughs> Thank yeah. you. This is between 30 and 60 percent in Europe and in some countries it's more than 80 percent people. You, you mentioned during your pitch that you have 50% um, profit. Isn't that a small profit? 60. Isn't this a, isn't 60% still a small profit in, in your business, in food businesses? Uh, I'm not sure that I understand, sorry. Is it, is it a big profit or is it a small profit? Yes, because it's usually profit. in usually, restaurants usually you get like 20, 200%. 30, yes. Usually it's around 30% in this sector. We make it 60 Okay, and last question. Can you do it better than the competitors? What is the uniqueness that you mentioned? Nikki, yeah, we know that the jury is ready and we will invite them. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat? Because I can't he, He's doing it to me as well. So what's the uniqueness that you mentioned? You mentioned that you ha you are doing something absolutely unique. Is it the personalized cooking? Yes, this is the personalized eating. What I mean, if you have some types of eating, what, whatever, it's keto or vegan, or it doesn't mean, but you didn't like parcel or onion or everything. You can make by your choice. So you can go in your app and you can fix all the ingredients which you want and to see in real time the calories, nutrient, grammage and everything. So we, you will know if you have the goals in your sport or if you have healthy problems also, you can manage. And you can receive this in best price. Thank you, thank you to everybody. Please now um, uh, go again in, on your seats, but uh, don't get too comfortable because you're about to be called on stage. Uh, big applause for our pitches, pitchers tonight. Bravo! And now let's welcome again our honorable jury. Is my microphone working? Because I feel that it's not very strong. It's scream more. Do not shout. <laughs> okay, jury, please welcome on stage. The remaining part, the, the survivors, marked safe from the discussion. Was it a heated, a heated discussion? Yeah, but some of those don't even survive, so it's gonna... They didn't survive, no. they left, they're not okay. happy with the decisions. We are joking, of course. <laughs> okay, now, thank you all for being on the link and for voting for your favorite pitches tonight. Uh, you probably saw on the slides behind us that uh, we took a look and we know who we like most. We will uh, share with you who is the winner of the audience, but before that, let's see who is the winner from the audience who voted. Stay on the link because now we are doing the draw. This is the, um, the Wheel of Fortune. And the person who is getting the very cool award of one week in the chosen networking Stop. premium locations is Theodor Deskalov. Who is he? 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Please contact a member of Networking Premium so to, to receive your award. Yes, now moving on to our friends and supporters tonight. Please welcome on stage everybody giving a special award so we can present them. And of course, as always, we will start with the audience winner. So thank you again for voting. Who is the audience winner? So team. First time pitching. Please welcome on stage. Congratulations. I'm asking them first because, first of all, because you guys chose them, but second, because usually they get uh, some of the cool awards from our supporters. The first one being from a startup that has been on Pitch to Pitch and is now in a second round of uh, funding. It's Micro Markets. Please welcome on stage to give your award. Yay! But my award is somewhere. Oh. Would you like to say what it is? Yeah, it's something healthy for it. It looks delicious, not healthy. So, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Thank you very then. much. We have other, please come forward. This is our legal department. Please introduce the award and who is winning it. I'm not part of the legal, de I'm not a legal department. Uh, yeah, I'm Ogi. I'm a partner at FinDeb, company that provides financial and accounting services. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I would love to give our award to Ajar. Ajar. Who is the next one from the awards behind? Congratulations. Hi, I'm Ivo from Beyond the Accelerator. At first, I want to congr congratulate uh, our team, my captain, that which are uh, our alumni. They perform very well and consistently growing. Uh, I'll tell you a short story. Last year, we chose to um, hire students who wanted to develop their startup. And uh, today, after six months' work with us, they're on Forbes magazine uh, cover. Uh, they are uh, nominated, they are selected uh, 30 under 30 for Forbes nomination. Uh, they work with uh, several publishers here in Bulgaria and they're paying them. So we want to invest to bet on uh, so team because they're young, they're energetic, and I believe you will do something very well. So you're invited and you get the pass for beyond. Congratulations, so team. Just for the picture. Where is the photographer? Here? For the photo? Yeah. There? Yeah. There twice. Last award from a supporter. Please come forward and say what is your award. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Vladimirov. I am founder of Formula Tech Bulgaria. We help tech startups uh, to find investors, to scale, to find strategic partnerships and so on. And so there is one company which I can see scaling very quickly and being a hit in Western Europe. Uh, especially with the new rise of this new culture we have and they just need to have really good marketing that is the one i'm going to award to and it's uh, my captain dad the award is a free consultation welcome on stage for a quick handshake and a photo the photo should be quick as well Okay, thank you supporters, thank you friends. We should say that this, thank you for the applause as well. Special thanks to Red Bull. And to okay, Heineken yeah. for being with us the whole season. Also from the funds is funding this season. Thank you to them as well. And now moving on to the big awards from our jury. Yeah, for Nikki, them, can you change the melody? Thank you. We will invite on stage the founder of the biggest, as we said, 
uh, on the Balkans chain of uh, networking locations, networking, not networking locations, co-working locations, networking premium. Please welcome on stage Emil Shekerjiski. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, Atanas. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We missed one, and also we missed one lawyer, also. Don't Take miss the lawyers. The They're don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be the lawyer? Uh, if they will come, they will come. OK, good. So I don't want to cross their path. That's dangerous. OK, guys, uh, there will be another one more award from Founder Institute for the winner for the public. So guys, come on stage again where you are. You and everyone else. So, uh, Dean, please come yeah. on the stage so, to receive your next award. If you don't know anything about Founder Institute, you are very, very wrong. We are one of the biggest pre-seed accelerators in the world. 200 countries, 100 cities, etc., etc., etc. We are the good guys, and uh, if you want to come from stage where you at an idea, and you want to be liked by investors. We had a place to go. Very difficult, but it's rewarding. Asking the audience, there are people that suffered that already. So the award is one free access to our next cohort. So congratulations, guys. You did well. Founders Institute are so famous that Ivaio doesn't need to say it on the mic, actually. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> OK, so the big award. Yeah, please stay, stay on the stage. Mm -hmm. And I would like also to call all other startups and all supporters from the beginning. So come on stage, come on stage. What Nikki, I want can to you change you, the melody? Nobody's dying right now. Nobody will die tonight. So every time, every time I tell you some story, and today I prepared a bit longer story. So this is the story of the, of the hunter. And I want to compare it to the story of the entrepreneur. There is a bad statistic, about 5% of the startup are succeeding, and you might hear that it's not worth to be an entrepreneur, it's not worth to make a startup because you have only 5% chance of success. It might sound true, this is the statistic, but then you need to think about it again. If you shift the mode to think about the statistic of a startup, and you shift it to a statistic of the entrepreneur, it's very changing. Entrepreneur success is much higher than 5%. It will not be with the first startup, it might be with the second, it might be with the third, but then the chances go up and up and up. So basically we are creating entrepreneurs here, we're not creating startups. It doesn't really matter, you can pivot 10 times and in the end you will be successful. But for sure what will happen, you will become a successful hunter. You will learn how to go out in the wild and hunt your food and get your money for yourself. Whereas when you are sitting in the village and getting money from somewhere every month, the same amount, and you are living a comfortable life, you are, you're not a hunter. If he will stop, you will not know how to hunt your money. But if you're an entrepreneur, you already learn how to hunt. Today, you might not hunt the animal, and the other day, and the whole year, you might not even hunt one animal. But for sure, you will learn how to hunt. So you are higher on the scale. You are a better hunter. So this is my story to encourage you to go on and become an entrepreneur. And now I will give our awards. So we try to give all of you the award of being tonight on the stage. And you've been and you, you've done it. So you're already winning. People gave you things. Most of you got things. And we will give you out of the co-working spaces things. So the first thing we would like to give is the Hooters Cafe with Anime. You're getting from us a free event to bring the <laughs> magic. Congrats. Stay here. The second one. And this is, I uh, just, just, just to clarify, this is uh, event space where you need to organize the event just the way you described it. So it's memorable and, uh, you know, your idea, it's like uh, visible to more people. You're destroying the moment right now. <laughs> it's, it's just you, my you need habit. To prove, so. You need to prove yourself. But it's... Yeah, there you go. We'll do it together. Don't be so lonely. <laughs> <You're not> lonely. <laughs> okay. so. <laughs> Sometimes happens. Uh, but I think it's still... Okay, never mind. Okay, the second thing. I just became father, so my captain dad. 
my Captain Dad. You are getting this award. Thank Woo! You. Thank you. Thank you very much for the support. I hope next year you'll be able to check the app. You can do all of the testing on me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, every season somebody is becoming a parent on this stage. Uh, I was the accelerator, true. now it's your true. turn. I don't true. know, guys. True. All the others. And the big award, without much tension, we give it to So Teen because we vibe so much with your idea. Woo! Thank you so much. Thank you. And now, the final words, please follow Networking Premium social media on social media, on Facebook. Uh, also follow uh, on my TV, on YouTube channel. Follow Elena Penev on Instagram, Mojo Master or LinkedIn, and uh, also Atanas Nechev. And now for our surprise... Atanas Nechev on LinkedIn, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And now, for our surprise, we are not going upstairs, we are going back, and we have a special cocktail, Christmas cocktail waiting for us. So please join us for the networking part. Thank you, jury. Thank you, participants. <laughs> See you on 11th of January. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. And that's it. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everybody. See you in January for my fourth time performing on this stage. Four years in a row, actually. Bravo, <laughs> <laughs>